You learn too much. When is enough enough? You learn too much. When is enough enough? OK, so what are the values you're honoring there? Um, knowledge. Knowledge. Curiosity. Uh, curiosity and contribution. Contribution. How about, I think you have a value under there of lifelong learning. Is that possible? Oh, most definitely, yes. Yeah. yeah. Some of us are like that. The more we dig, the more we want. One more. One more obsessive, uh, obsessive value. Oh, we have one over here. What's your name? What's your, Kala? Um, freedom is one of, was so what, one of so, my So what do, the, what do the people tell you? So I run from absolutely everything. And you run from everything? Like literally, like if things get tough or something, I'll just like move to like the other side of Canada. And I'm constantly just like, oh, things are going. It's so like things, things, when they don't go your way, you move. It's like, okay, bye, next thing. But I'm always. I'm out of here, bye. But one of my freedom things, I said freedom and adventure. So then I was like, oh. Freedom running, and adventure is a value. I'm running from everything, but I'm always looking for something better. So it's kind of like ties into it. Okay, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, I guess. That, she, she's got it right. She's running from a lot of things. But maybe it's because she's starting to feel trapped in that situation, and she's like, I, I, I need freedom. I just got it. I don't care if, if, I, if I don't figure this out. I need to go somewhere else. Mm. The only challenge with all that sometimes is, amazingly enough, wherever we go, there we are. No, no, I, I, I'm learning this. So, like, I'm actually just recently planted roots. You're planting roots. Like, I'm going to stay here for a while. I'm not leaving here now. Okay. So that's kind of my plan. Great. Good <laughs> stuff. Give her a hand. That was half a hand, but okay, we'll take it. Thanks. Can we have a hand for Alberto for the, uh, the mic duties here? Thanks, Alberto. Okay, now we put this all together. What I'd like you to do for the next section, I want you to create strings of values. And I'll tell you why we're doing this. One value by itself, I find, doesn't have as much, uh, as much power as if we combine it with other similar values that are kind of you know, in the same direction. So let me give you an example here. So here are mine. I find these go together. And again, how you combine them is your business. They don't have to make sense to someone else. They make sense to you because they connect to you. For me, freedom, passionate adventure go well together. And those are values I will kill. Sorry, I, I will hurt people a lot to get. No, <laughs> I didn't kill anyone yet. Tonight is not the night. Honesty, integrity, walk the talk. So for me, people who talk a big game and don't do what they say they're going to do, that is a big pet peeve of mine. You say something, you do it. But that's my value. I can't, I can't send that on everybody else. That I've decided, oh, I want to try to live my life that way. But for me, honesty, integrity, walk the talk, they go well together, those three. Passion, love, and connection, those ones are important to me, and they go together. Achievement, success, recognition, I kind of like being up on stage here. I kind of like being rewarded for the work that I do. Only if I'm successful and I achieve something, though. I don't want reward that's empty. Okay? And that's my whole problem, I go, and, and this is a sidebar, with this whole Facebook thing. Okay? We, we're in a culture now that basically has removed all sense of achievement. Kids cannot play sports anymore with, with actual scores okay, because it's going to hurt their feelings. Uh, Facebook, everybody has to be your friend. right? I'm sorry, but somebody who can unclick me in a second, that's not a friend. Okay, so I'm just, it's a bit pet peeve of mine, but all I'm saying is that we live in a society now that it's almost like the bar is as low as we can get, so everybody can hop over the bar. Well, I'm sorry, but if the bar is that low, it's not an achievement to get over it anymore. And you know what? We're not doing kids a favor by doing that to them, because the real world doesn't work with those rules. The real world works with hard work and actually doing something in this world and making a difference. And I have a real problem with where we're going with this. And I, I, anyway, I work in the education system, but I can tell you, I, I, I don't buy into a lot of that stuff. So anyway, sorry, that was a bit of a sidebar. Oh, you got a hand for that. All right, cool. Contribution and support. So can, can you guys put a couple of strings together that mean something to you? And I'd like to hear some people's strings. Again, it doesn't have to make sense to us, but if it makes sense to you, it is, it, it is an important uh, value string. And guess what? That's going to be one of our building blocks for our life purpose statement, because now we've done some of the heavy lifting. What is it that we're willing to strive for? Okay. Anybody want to share a couple of their strings? Anybody have some strings? I mean, what I mean is a couple of values, words together. Nobody. Oh, yes. That gentleman over there. Do you want to go? Am I going? I can go, but I can't do it. Oh, you want to go? I, yeah. yeah, go ahead. <laughs> What's your name? Uh, Vannon. Vannon. So um, my string is, um, I kind of categorized it with contribution. So with contribution, I have transparency, uh -huh. free, honesty, and integrity. 
Honesty under, and integrity. Under Transparency, yeah. honesty and integrity. Aaron, you know him well. Would you say that, that, that kind of, that, that's, does that resonate? Okay, good. Did he pay you to say that? No? Okay, good. Good job, Van. I'm just kidding. Give a hand to Vannon, please. I'm on the cord. I got uh, health and vitality. Health and vitality? What else? Um, also freedom and passion. Freedom and passion. So health, vitality, freedom, and passion. Great. So you guys understand the, the whole string thing? Does that make sense for you? Does that make sense? Okay. Is anybody having trouble putting strings together? You can do this a little bit later if you need to as well. All right? I'm looking at the time, and it's a quarter to nine. If you guys are not completely averse to it, I want to hit my 925 hard stop, and I want you guys to have your life purpose statement. And we started a little late. Do you mind if I keep going? Do you mind? No? Let's do this thing. All right. We're now jumping into the actual life purpose. Okay? So what's possible now that you know your values? What do you think? Some of you have a much stronger grounding in terms of what's possible for you. What do you think is possible now that you know your values? Anything more possible for you? Nothing? Yes? Aha. Uh -huh. So what's your name? Dharma? Do you want to say it for the, uh, the people on TV land? Lorna? Uh, uh, surround yourself with pe people with similar values. So surround yourself with people with sil similar values. Great. Anybody else? What's possible now that you know some of your values, some of the, your most important kind of hidden train tracks of why you behave the way you behave and why are you living? Anybody else have any insights from this? You kind of know what's missing, okay, and you can make choices based on, so that's a great, Melissa, you've got a great point there. You know, if you really believe in your values, which I hope you do, or else we wouldn't spend all this time doing it, you're wasting your money here tonight, which you're not, um, you know, you can make better choices. If somebody gives you a choice and it doesn't align with your values, don't even feel bad about saying no to it, right? It doesn't fit anyway. It's not going to work out. So it should make your choosing a lot easier in your life. Isn't that what we all want, a, a bit of a simpler existence? We talked about all these choices we have today and all, all the busyness. Wouldn't it be nice to have kind of a, a system that filters out bad choices? Well, having your powerful values does that for you. It's kind of an automatic filter to get rid of crappy decisions. You see what I mean? And again, I'm going to go off on a tangent here. I believe the major problem we have in society today is that people don't have, they don't know their values, and they're chasing the wrong values that are being foisted on them by media and by large corporations who want to sell products, okay? And, and that is not a healthy life. It's, it's consumeristic and it doesn't work. All right, good stuff. So, three components to a life purpose. I'm good for this, Umberto. Thanks, thank you, thank you. So, so this person here, look at this, this, I love this cartoon. I have so much potential, this person on the left says. Then why don't you ever do anything, this person on the right says. And this person says, well, I don't want to use it up. I kind of like that, that one, right? But how many people do you talk to? It's like, I've got so much potential in my life, right? i got potential. Okay, what are you doing about it, right? It's easy to say you got potential, isn't it? Talk is cheap again. So again, there's three components to a life purpose, a life of, of purpose, right? Number one. Your skills, your experience, your aptitudes, and who you are. We are all unique. Like a, like a, like a I was going to say a sunflower. That's not the right one. Like a star, like a snowflake. We're all absolutely unique with gifts that were given to us, experiences that are unique to, know, to, to, to ourselves, right? We all have potential. That being said, at five foot eight and a half, even if I wanted to be the top basketball star on the planet, I'm not quite sure I've got the potential to do that. So, you know, sometimes it, maybe I do, but maybe I'm too old for it now, whatever. But the bottom line is you need to have a certain amount of potential and, and know what your potential is to live a life of purpose. If you don't know what your potential is and what you can do, you, how can you have a life of purpose? Do you see how potential is important? So that's one of the key three circles of a life of purpose. Number two, profit, okay? You must be able to make money doing something that is your purpose, now, you're going to say to me, well, uh, I don't need money. Uh, I, I'm going to go down to South America, and I want to work with indigenous peoples. Okay, so your ticket is going to be free to fly down to, uh, to South America, right? The food you're going to be eating there is going to be free. Who's going to pay for that, right? That's still profit. 
right? I don't care how amazing you are and how good you are. If you're not eating for three days, you're going to kind of lose the flame. Would you agree with me? It's going to be hard for you to help other people if you're, not, if you're hungry and you just, right? So you need to find something in your life to have purpose. You need to be able to make some money doing it. Okay, And let's not treat money like it's a disease. I know a lot of people who are spiritual think that money is a bad thing. Money is energy. And if it allows you to help more people, it's a good thing. Okay, As long as, energy, as, long as your money is not ill-gotten, obviously, and you're not hurting other people to get it, I think you can help more people with more money than less. Right? Wouldn't it be nice to leave your wonderful waiter or waitress here tonight a $10,000 tip just because you can? Wouldn't that be a nice problem to have? I'd love to be able to do that. So the third circle to find our purpose is our passion. We've talked about already that, right? There are many things in life that will catch your eye, but only a few will catch your heart. Pursue those, okay? So your passion. You can only be on purpose in your life if you're passionate about it. Again, you can you know, work hard at something, but if you don't have passion for it, you're not going to outlast everyone. The first speed bump that comes up, the first hard time you have, you're going to quit that thing right away because you've got no passion. So at the center of potential, profit, and passion is your purpose. Is that useful for you? No? I liked it. I thought it was kind of cool. All right, we're going to do your life purpose. Set. So now we're going to create your life purpose statement. We're going to create this thing for you. Okay, we're going to have some success getting your life purpose done right now. I love this picture. Isn't he cute? All right, so the life purpose statement. The life purpose statement should be a lighthouse in a storm so you can access it when you're lost or off course. Your life purpose will be your guiding light. No matter what it is that's going on, it will help you get to your destination, whatever that might so be. <clears throat> so here's some ex examples of life purpose statements. I am the lighthouse that guides people to their dreams. Wow, I like that. I am the dynamite that transforms people's lives. Woo, that's got some torque to it. I am the rock in the shoe that causes people to remember they are alive. Ooh, I like that one. I am the alarm clock that awakens people to their magnificence. Okay, so they're very, what? Very couchy. Couchy? Coachy. All right. Here's the thing. They sound very flowery. They sound very over the top. But guess what? For those people who created those, they mean something for them. And you're going to leave here tonight with something that means something for you. And I don't care how flowery he or she thinks it is. It's not their statement. It's yours. Okay? So look at how all of these are made. Basically, you've got a metaphor of an image of something because an image is, remember, an image is like a thousand words, right? So we need that metaphor to give it some power. Because if I just say to someone, I'm that guy that guides people to their dreams. Uh, hello, doesn't have much juice to it, does it? Or if I say, I'm the lighthouse that guides people to their life. Again, it loses a lot of juice to it, right? So we're going to create a purpose for you. I thought I'd share mine. Once I found this four years ago, oh my God, it's on my vision wall now. And I, I can tell you, I live this thing. And when you're living your life purpose, life is fun. Life is easy. Life's exciting. So mine is... I'm the unstoppably fearless line that demonstrates courage to dramatically wake people up to their most brilliant selves. <laughs> right? That's what I'm doing for you guys tonight, right? Thanks. Great. I spent a lot of time doing this myself, but you know what? It still fits four years later. It still works for me. I've got a big lion on my, uh, I like tigers better, but the lion seems to be the king of the jungle. I kind of like that one. All right? So what not to do for a life purpose statement? I want people to be happy. Well, good for you. Are you happy? Right? I want people to be in better relationships. Okay, milk toast. We're going to go change the whole world with that milk toast life purpose statement. Why don't I just kill myself now? Right? If it's too vague, it's not going to motivate you to action. Does that make sense? It's got to be something that's going to connect with you and grab you. You guys get that? And that's what we're going to do right now. All right. So here's the format. It must describe the impact you want to have on people. Why do you think this is important that we need to know the impact we're having on other people? It drives you. Most of us want to contribute to the world. We don't, you know, we don't, don't want to retire to some island and live like in Castaway. As great a movie as it was, 
He wasn't having a big impact on the world while he was on the island. His story did after, but he wasn't. It was him and Wilson, and Wilson was having bad days sometimes, right? Okay. So it's usually a metaphor, a metaphor. Here's some examples of metaphors. Time, you thief, or life is a journey, or more is up, or less is more, or love is a jewel, all the world's a stage. Let me give you just a simple example. If I tell you, my lawn team is going to come in and cut your grass really well tomorrow, okay? That's one impact. If I tell you, if you hire our organization, we're going to sculpt your lawn into a masterpiece. Didn't I say the same thing? But a metaphor just lifted it a 10,000 times. Does that make sense? That's what we're going to do for your life. I'm so excited. OK. Oh, and I'm stuck. Oh, 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 oh. The chair got me. OK. So, so here it says, Navy, huh? Are you a volunteer? More like a voluntold. So um, I've got a volunteer who's agreed to uh, play along with us here on our screen. Can I have a big hand of applause for George Pappas? George, can you come on up here with me? Yeah, you did. Can you get that leg in there? <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Okay, look. okay, so the reason George is here now, maybe we'll put it up here, is so that we can give you an example of how to do this, OK? I thought it would be really important. Let's give a hand to George, first of all. Let's give George a hand here. All right. So I'll create George's life purpose statement with him up here, OK? And you guys are going to do the same thing on your end for yourself, OK? You guys ready? You guys ready to rock and roll? All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you to close your eyes. We're going to go through. Uh, quite a few visualizations, actually four of them. Once I finish the visualization, open your eyes and write down the words that impact you. And I'm going to have George do the same thing on the board here so that we can see how his process works and I'll show you how to do it, okay? You guys ready for the first uh, visualization? Close your eyes, George as well. I have the marker when you're ready to go. So we're going to do four visualizations together. This is the first one. I want you to imagine a packed auditorium, maybe Madison Square Garden in New York City, thousands of people in the audience. Close your eyes, please. Packed audience. There's a buzz going on. There's milling about. Nothing started yet, but you feel that there's going to be an incredible person up on stage. You don't know who it is, but the crowd feels the buzz of that person being up on stage already. Suddenly, you realize what's going to be happening. You realize that it's you in 10 years. Your future self is going to be speaking on stage in a few moments. Wow. Open your eyes. I want you to now write down what was the impact your future self wants to have on the audience when it's that your future self, you in 10 years, the audience was just electric waiting for you to speak to them? What were they anticipating? What was your future self did an incredible talk. They blew away the audience. They changed everybody in the audience. What, what did they say? Who, who were you being in your future self in five or 10 years that had the audience change that way? What, what were you radiating out to the audience that had them want to just like, wow, I'll follow you anywhere? So write down some of the words that come up for you. George, do you want to write down some of your yeah, words yeah. that came up? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> 